Hello friend, welcome to Shark Jets, I'm Skidbits. In my last video, I showed you how to deploy your C Sharp Discord bot to a VPS server. In my case, it was DigitalOcean, but it'll work with any server that is using Docker. Uh, the main medium was Docker and Git. And in this video, we're gonna use most of the same steps, but instead of getting your bot onto a remote server somewhere, we're gonna get it onto a Raspberry Pi instead. Now, in order to keep this video short, I need to make a few assumptions. Assumption number one, you have a functional Pi and are somewhat comfortable typing commands into it, right? Because we're gonna have to get into the command prompt, we're gonna have to type some stuff, and if you don't have a working Pi and you don't know how to use your Pi, then this isn't gonna be very helpful. Number two, you already have a working bot. Right? If you don't have a bot or it's not working, then why are you trying to deploy it, right? You wanna make sure you have a nice, stable, functional bot. That's the step that's important here and the other one. But you need, you need to have a bot, right? Otherwise, what are you doing here? Number three, that's a two. But number three, that's a three. Uh, you watched my last video. The there's a lot of stuff that we're going to go over again um, that we're going to do here that we did in the last video. So you need to know how to install Docker on your computer. You have to have Docker up and running and all of that is explained in that other video. So get that started first. The only caveat is that in that video I suggested that you install Docker Desktop. I still stand by that but I found out afterwards that Docker Desktop doesn't run on Windows Home, it only runs on Windows Pro. So if you have Windows Home, there's still something else you gotta install. It's called Docker Toolbox, and it's also available on docker.com. So you just need to decide which operating system you have and install the right version of Docker for you. So that's all there is to that. If you have those three requirements met, then uh, let's go ahead and get started, but first, please make sure to like and subscribe to let me know you care. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are. Uh, as I said earlier, the most important thing here is that we already have a running Discord bot, a fully functional Discord bot. So I have one right here. I'm gonna hit the run button and that's gonna open up another window here and we'll see the bot starts firing away. And if I go into my Discord, this particular bot will publish a message when it boots up to say we have successfully started. And it will respond to hello and let me know that it got my message. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. If you watched my earlier video, which you should, you'll understand what's going on here. So that is step one, make sure we have a working Visual Studio project for this bot. Step number two from the previous video is also to make sure we have uh, Docker up and running. So I got my console window open here. I'm gonna type in the command docker compose up and we will See that our bot is once again running based off of Docker. My channel should get a video or a notification here soon. Oh, I did forget to do one thing that I mentioned in the previous video, and that is to do a build first when I make some code changes. I'm gonna close this and do a Docker compose build. All right, and now I can do docker compose up. Perfect. And now you'll see that this has posted as it's supposed to. Go ahead and delete that again. And break out of this bot. Do a docker compose down to make sure that it's off. All right, so we verified that our bot is working with Visual Studio and we verified that our bot is working 
with Docker. So since we know that everything is fine in Botsville, let's move over to our Pi. Now in my case, I've got a Pi running and I have a window here which will let me log into the Pi and do everything remotely. But you can also do these commands from the terminal directly on the Raspberry Pi. So a couple of things you need to know. Um, I have a Pi that's just freshly installed. There's nothing on it. I just installed Raspbian uh, this morning and it is, I haven't even touched it. I haven't logged into it or anything. So um, that is a priority now. Uh, I mean, it's not a priority, but you should know that this is just a fresh install of Raspbian. So I'm going to remote into it using uh, SSH. Okay, cool. So I'm logged into the Raspberry Pi. Everything's great. Um, I don't know how your Raspberry Pi is set up, but it's important that the Raspberry Pi have the most amount of space because you're going to be installing some stuff. So I'm going to run the raspy config command to make sure that the hard drive on it or the memory card is being fully utilized. Okay, so what that did is it made sure that the uh, Pi software will use the maximum amount of space on that memory card. And in order to do that, I had to reboot. So I will go ahead and reconnect. Okay, so we're back on it. Let me just type in clear to clear up the screen. Now we need to also make sure that the Raspberry Pi has the latest software installed, the latest um, install packages. So I'm going to type in a command here. All right, so the sudo apt apt-get update will go ahead and update our system. All right, I'm going to minimize this background console just so we don't have to worry about two screens there. Now we get down to the nitty gritty. Now that our system's up to date, we've got all the space we need on our memory card uh, and we have a good OS. I'm going to run a specific command to get the initial Docker install. Okay, so this command is a curl, which is going to basically do a, a get on these on a specific website. It's going to get the Docker initial install and go ahead and process that. All right, so Docker has finished installing. And as you can see, it says uh, we've got uh, a message here saying adding a user to docker group will grant the ability to run containers uh, so that's literally the next thing we're gonna do this is a warning saying you might also uh, want to reconsider that but uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that so that's the next step we're going to do a sudo user mod and add this user to the group docker Right, so I'm going to add the Pi user to the Docker group. Done. And now we're going to go ahead and reboot just for safety's sake. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and type in Docker just to make sure it's there. And as you can see, we've got a command a response back. So we know Docker is good to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and clear this just to pretty things up. Now we've got to install the secondary things for Docker Compose. So I'll type in a command here. Okay, so this is going to do another install. In this case, it's going to install some developer libraries that we're going to need for the next step. All right, that completed. I'll go ahead and clear this again. And then we'll type in one more command. All right, this command's gonna install Python 3, which is a programming language, and uh, Python 3 pip, which is uh, kind of like apt-get. It lets you install certain things with Python, for Python. And that was already apparently in the system, so I'm good to go. 
And then the next thing I'm going to do is remove the Python config parser. All right, now I'm gonna clear this again. Then finally, we're gonna go ahead and install Docker Compose. So we type in sudo pip3. Now this is not using app get, it's gonna use pip to get the Docker Compose install. So sudo pip3 install docker-compose. All right, that installed without any issues. So I'll go ahead and clear this screen again and type in Docker Compose just to verify that it's there. And as you can see, we get back our help. So go ahead and clear this again. And now we move on to stage two. Or would this be stage three? I lost track. So we will go back to our project console and in here, I'm going to go ahead and commit any changes I might have to GitHub. So I'll do a clear to clear this up real quick. Now I'll do a git status to see my changes. I've changed my bot.cs and I've changed my config file. So I will git add everything and a git commit with a message saying updates config.json token because that's what happened and then i will git push this to github so now if i go to my github page You'll see here it says that my last con commit was yesterday, but if I refresh the page, my last commit was 22 seconds ago. And it says updates config.json. So I want to get the clone address like I did in the previous video. Clone with HTTPS because we're not using SSL in this particular instance. Copy that address. Go back to my Raspberry Pi make sure first of all that we have git installed which we do and then i will do a git clone and paste that address that'll bring everything over from github now it wants me to log in so i'll go ahead and do that and you can see it pulled in all the files that had to be pulled over for that. So if I do an ls to list this folder, you'll see there is, let me do another cleaner ls here. ls-l will list everything in a vertical format. So you can see there's a folder called sharkbot in that folder, in this folder. So I'll go ahead and cd to sharkbot. We already know that we're gonna have to go in one extra there's another folder called Sharkbot, and we're looking for the folder that has the Docker Compose file. So I'm going to cd into the next Sharkbot folder and do an ls-l again. And you'll see this is the folder that has everything we need. It's got our code, it's got our Docker file, it has our Docker Compose file, everything that we need. So let me clear one more time and then type Docker Compose. dash build no space there and it should build our project just fine I made a mistake there's no dash I don't know what I'm thinking so just docker compose build space build so let me clear this again because I don't like dirty windows clear docker dash compose space build
Okay, what seems to be an eternity later, it is done. Everything has downloaded, it has compiled, and we are ready to go. So I'll go ahead and clear this again, and then I'll pull up my Discord window. And go ahead and, whoop, I'm in the wrong console. Here we go. Okay, so in this window, I'll go ahead and do our Docker Compose up. should see action. Just like that. Now I'll go ahead and type in my hello. And you see it still responds just like if it was running on my computer. Now remember, if you watch the other video, you don't want to keep the console running like this, so I'll break this and do a Docker Compose down. And then remember that the way you should be running this is with Docker Compose up and then D for daemon to keep it running in the background. Docker Compose up dash D. And then it'll launch right up and then you won't see any of the console messages because it's running in a background thread. So we're back to the console. And then if you go ahead and make some changes to your code, which I'll demonstrate again here. Uh, let's see. This is our startup message. It says we have successfully started whenever the bot boots up. So I'm going to go ahead and put hi mom in here. And then I will commit that change. Well, uh, I want to make sure to stress this very, very diligently. Um, whenever you make a change to the bot, make sure to run it locally. Make sure everything works locally before you push it, right? Because you don't want to troubleshoot on the actual server or on the actual Pi. You want to make sure everything is running as it should on your computer. In this case, I'm just changing a text field, some string, so it's not a big deal, but if I touched any other code that did anything crazy, anything at all, I would make sure to build this and run it and make sure that it's running fine on my machine. Now, remember when you're doing this with local testing, uh, you need to turn off your bot on the other server, otherwise you'll be mistakenly thinking that this bot is the one that's working not the one that's actually currently running. So I hope that makes sense. The point is, make sure to test your code changes, even though I didn't, because this is just a string. So uh, as you can see, I built it several times now. There's no problem. Everything builds. It's fine. So I will go back to my folder here and commit the new changes to GitHub. So git status to see what I did. You can see the only file modified is that bot.cs file. I'll go ahead and git add my change and commit it with a message. Dash M. I added a string. And then do a git push to GitHub. Perfect. Now, if uh, we verify that on GitHub, do a refresh here. And you can see I added a string, so it's got my latest change. So then if I go back to my pi, which is this one, and let's pretend that I had logged out, but whatever. Uh, so now we'll go ahead and do a Docker Compose down to turn off the currently running bot. Okay. And we want to make sure we're in the right folder. In this case, you can see that we're in Sharkbot, Sharkbot. Um, but you want to make sure that you're in your project folder in case for some reason it takes you back to your home directory or somewhere else. So now I'll do a git pull. And it should ask me to log in again.
All right, now you can see that it brought in our change to that bot.cs file. Clear this again and do another build. This build should be quicker. All right, you can see we have a successful build, but that's no surprise because we, of course, built it before we deployed it. So we knew it was gonna run fine on the Pi. So I'll go ahead and clear this again and then do a docker compose up dash D. And there you have it. You can tell the bot started up. And there it just came online. And as you can see down here, we have successfully started HiMom. And now you can close your console window and uh, not worry about your bot being down. And there you have it, pretty quick and simple. If you would have done something differently, please let me know in the comments. And also, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to keep this channel going. Thanks again for watching. I'm still Skidviz. Pika Pika. Peace out.